Hey all, welcome back to Fuzzy Virtually Gaming and a new video on the channel going through what I'm going to call Reign of Arrows 2.0. Now, after bringing out my original guide in the POV, I shared the POV with someone on my Discord called Slot, who is basically the guru that I go to who's so much better than me at going through POV and making sure that each new node that you take is the best node and it's got the most efficiency. And it turned out, although my POV did damage, there was definitely some defensive areas that were lacking that could be fixed. Um, the one thing he suggested was maybe we don't go frenzy charges and we go all onslaught. And there's a few reasons for it that I'll come on to in a moment. Um, obviously, leveling will be quicker because you get your double onslaught nodes. It also means if you wanted to heist early, you'll have two lots of onslaught nodes and phasing, which is the perfect combo. But more towards end game, it makes your defenses much easier to work around and be flexible. So I'm going to go through the tree in a minute, but I just have to give him a massive shout out because I think I would have just settled on this POB and gone with it. It works. Don't get me wrong. If you use the POB for the, you know, the crit version, the Lana version, it works. It'll be absolutely fine. You'll get it done. But I think it's not that great in terms of defensive, and it might get a bit frustrating when you, if you get one shot. So what we've come up with is a toned down DPS for the character, but so much more efficiency everywhere else, which we're going to go through. So there's footage in the background rolling with this character. It's got decent gear, but nothing that's amazing. It's not going to be like, oh, that's 50 divines. It's going to be, I would think, if you craft yourself 10 to 15 divines to get this character properly end game viable, it's done all the invitations by the feed. It's done Maven, Uber Elder, uh, Juice Maps, Guardian Maps, Conquerors, all that sort of thing. And it's absolutely fine. And other than for the big bosses, I'll run two defensive auras. The good thing about going the route I'm going to show you is that you can switch in anger like I've done here for bosses and you still end up with okay defenses. So I'm just going to talk through the general differences. In terms of leveling, you can level exactly the same. Um, it's not a problem. You can do respecking if you want to get to this stage later. What I'm going to do is put a POB in this description, which is essentially the full POB, but with this tree as an entry and leveling this way. I'm not going to do anything with the original video because I don't want people to get super confused. If I put this POB in the old video, they're going to go, oh, hang on. Um, nothing matches this video. I don't really understand what I'm doing. What I will do is put a massive disclaimer in the comments on my Bill God saying, go to this video and watch it and decide which version you want to play. So I'm just going to go through the changes. In terms of the tree, it's, there's not that much difference. But what we are doing, because we're going on so is obviously we're taking these nodes and we're keeping them in there massive. And then we're obviously going up here and getting lion eyes. We don't go up here. Um, and yeah, generally, the, the tree is pretty much the same. Where it changes is the ascendancy. So we're not going to get these nodes. And they are big damage. They are more damage than Onslaught and Onslaught effect, without a doubt, once you get a few frenzy charges going. But what Onslaught gives you is super, super movement speed. And this 10% chance to evade attacks during Onslaught is massive because it's flat. And it's harder to get chance to evade the higher your evasion gets. So having a flat 10% added on top of what you got is amazing. It gets us to 90 to 95% chance to evade with a good chunk of armor as well. And then all we're doing for frenzy charges, which you will need, is a craft on your quiver which is global crit strike chance and chance to get a frenzy on crit strike and with rain of arrows we're firing down tons of arrows so you're going to get to max frenzy charges fairly quick as you'll see from the footage um, that i'm going to roll intermittently in the background if you can't get that quiver what you're going to have to do is drop some points somewhere take the mark nodes and take chance to gain a frenzy when you hit a marked enemy that's then going to give you your frenzy charges on bosses you are going to have to drop some nodes um, so it's up to you what ones you drop i would probably drop now, this is the setup that I would recommend for mapping because it's nice and safe. For bossing, I use a slightly different tree because I'm not that worried about the chaos resistance for most of the bosses. So what I'd do is drop these nodes here and I'd actually go up here and get these bow nodes here. They're not amazing nodes, but for bosses, you want as much damage as possible. So when you go into your invitation, save them up, save your bosses up, do them all at once, drop your chaos nodes and take these nodes here. Obviously, this is only level 92. If you go up to, say, level 95, you can almost get the best of both worlds anyway just by dropping a point somewhere. But this is more for mapping just to make you comfy against chaos damage. And it's all these nodes combined that make a massive difference, especially this 5% evasion as extra armor. And that's sort of what lets us run anger, drop determination, still have some armor. Like, you won't have amazing armor. It's going to be 4 to 5k without flasks, maybe 10 or 12 with. But you've got your anger damage aura, which you might need at bosses to make it feel a bit more comfortable. Um, so the setup I've got at the moment is the anger one. So we'll just go and look at the defenses. And without Flas on, we have an 84% chance to have... Let's just go into a map, actually, just to make sure we're looking at realistic stats. 
I'm just going to go back into the bottom so I don't get killed. Yeah, 84% chance to evade with apparently a 42% fizz damage reduction, but that's based on tiny hits. That's without Flask on. Stick our Flask on, we got 90% chance to evade with 40k evasion and almost 10k armor, and that's without determination. I have not really min-maxed my gear. I've just made sure that armor evasion where I can. This is just evasion. And then what we'll do now is stick in determination. And I'll sh this is what I map with. This is a sub that I map with because you do not need the damage from anger for mapping. Then without flask, you got 14k armor and your evasion. You boost it up, you got 40k pretty much evasion, 24k armor, 90% chance to evade. We've obviously got our resistances, which could really do with coming up. So I need to think about whether I drop a damage anoint and go um, prismatic skin, I think it is, over here. Uh, for plus two to all elemental resistances. And then that would make me much, much more tanky overall. We have our avoidance here, which you're going to get either from boots, which you'll need. You will need an implicit and a craft, but it can be the lowest level of each. Or you can do some shenanigans with your chest where you block... Um, Get good suffixes, block, veil, chaos, and try and get um, avoid ailments, but it can be expensive. Um, so I would recommend getting on boots. Your other option is, we'll see what jewels are around. Are they cheap? Can you do it that way? But if you can't do it, it's literally just an Eldritch mod on boots and then just craft it from your bench on the suffixes. For spell suppression, I try and get some on gear and my implicit so that I can drop these here and go here because it just saves you a few points doesn't matter too much it just means you're gonna to have to drop some damage or life points if you have to go here but get spell suppressed capped is really important now lion eyes might be expensive because grimro and firegrass are league starting ellie bows they're going to be using this jewel in their build i would imagine there is a way to farm this card and it's from the caldera uh, map which is tier three now this jewel essentially if we go to it so if we go and have a look at a card on poedb lion card five cards gives you a lion eyes item now, the bow, which I think is Lion Eyes Glare, is unlikely to be in this or super rare since it's one of their buff uniques, which helps us. So we've then got four items, really. See, this is my impression. I can't imagine they would leave it at an equal drop. I think they are slightly weighted. I'm sure the boots drop more. But if you wanted to farm this, say, in SSF, or it ends up being four to five divines and you really want it, you can farm Caldera, which is a T3 map. And it's a map where you go through two portals and kill two mini bosses. Those mini bosses can drop the card, and from experience, they drop it quite regularly. If you get a bit of rarity on your gear, just specifically get a gear set. Doesn't even matter if it's good, it's a tier three map. Just chuck loads of rarity and quantity on your gear. Buy some Caldera maps or run some Caldera maps that you've got. You will drop the Lion card. The other option, which I'll put in the POB, is Cluster Jewels. If this jewel ends up any more than two divines, I don't think it's worth buying because you actually get more damage from Cluster Jewels. Cluster Jewels will be a couple of Divines, I think, for a set, but the medium ones will be dirt cheap. You just need to find a good three passive large Cluster Jewel, um, which is either going to be like a lightning damage one or an attack damage cluster. The only thing I would say, don't go for the attack clusters where you get loads of stuff based on whether you're leeching, because for a lot of the time, because you're trying to get your mana cost down a lot, you're not going to be leeching. I'd also recommend maybe taking this node, because it's really good for survivability, because we've got tons of arrows raining down. You will 100% then never be leeching. So don't fall for these clusters that are like, oh, I get 80% more damage when I'm leeching because you're probably not leeching. Character I've got at the moment has got a level one awakened added lightning you, and it's not even qualityed up. So a 2020 normal added lightning is probably going to be about the same. No other awakened gems, just quality gems in places. My rain of ours hasn't got there yet. The six link, I have no idea about this. I feel like artillery ballista with GMP gives me the most DPS. But it's fairly marginal. I would say either run, Reign of Arrows, Artillery Ballista. They tended to be the better DPS. I tried Barrage, it was awful. I tried Light and Arrow Barrage, it was awful. And I tried Tornado Shot without arrows, and that was awful. Um, Storm Rain is also obviously another good option. I just hate the look of it on the screen. I can't see what's going on. So for your six, I don't think it matters, but I would go either Storm Rain, Artillery Ballista, or Reign of Arrows. There, as I said in previous guides, there is information on how to craft all of these sort of items. Not, not expensive. Then I mean, they're not cheap, but they wouldn't. They're not expensive items, and you don't need it all. It's just a nice to have. Uh, but I would try and follow this character as much as you can. The important things are your quiver wants to be DPS. I got lucky and got life on this, but I'll be perfectly happy if it didn't. 
you want crit multi, damage of bows, prod speed, and then a craft. So let's do a map showcase. I'll close the video out and then we will run through the POB. And this is the point I wanted to get to on the character where I can farm comfortably. So then actually I can just wait till I get omniscience to go to tornado shot. Uh, because I do feel it feels much better uh, with omniscience. You can do it without it. It's perfectly viable. I just think the more damage you get, the more chance you've got of being able to fit like a wake and chain into your gems. And then clear feels amazing, but it would purely be a boss run. I think it would struggle um, with invitations. Where's the other dude? Oh, he's dead. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're just going quickly clean up this map. So I'll obviously save... All oh, this boss is possessed as well. So we'll just take the boss down. Who, wherever they are, there they are. Have I dropped a portal? No, I did. Let's drop another one anyway. And then we'll go and see drops. So you can see the DPS is fine on drops. Oh, Maven's putting that cold one down. That's the worst thing to get for Maven because it means I can't get my point blank. Because I'm going to have to stand in their degens and die. So we've got some flasks up, so we'll prop them. So Maven is also making him tanky, which is annoying. Oh, he's done. Oh, don't really want to get killed by them. Uh, nice. Um, so that's the build on a pretty horrible map, to be fair. With drops being possessed and me having enfeeble. And it was still comfortable. I never felt like I was in danger. Maven was just annoying. So let's go through the POB. And I'll run through the config I've got set up to show you guys there's no shenanigans going on. I'm going to go through what I've ticked and unticked in terms of skills. And then we'll go through a comparison between Lion Eyes setup and a Cluster Jewel setup. So we start with Lion Eyes setup. It's as shown in game, except I haven't taken these nodes because I'm assuming this is a boss um, setup or you want more DPS. So we're taking these here. Uh, skills wise, I've got determination in, I think. Yeah, so if you wanted to look at your anger, you just tick it in here. And obviously it's loads more DPS, but this is kind of the mapping version. With the anger setup, you're still okay, but obviously with less determination, your molten shells worse. So I would always map with determination. So config wise, let me just make sure I'm on the line set I am. So config wise, I'm just saying it's a guardian or pinnacle boss. We ignite, chill and shock because we do. Shock of 24, which is conservative. I've got like up to 40 on Cirrus. 50 resonant count. Have you crit recently? Yes. And then frenzies because we get them on chance to hit crit on bosses and they're, they're up in about three seconds. And then obviously we're using blood ratio mapping so we get them there. That's kind of it. I've not even done any pantheons and stuff. I've just done it as per the, the, the bare bones. And then if we go into the skills of unticked Molten Shell, if you tick that in, it obviously improves your defenses loads. And I've unticked Bile Haste. Again, if you just want to see what it's like with it up, you would add it in. Uh, so let's just look at the two. Well, actually, no. We just need to look at the crit version. So the tree changes a lot because we need more points, essentially, to go clusters. Because we lose Culling Strike and Leech from the Masteries. So we have to take Leech here, although this node is amazing anyway. It just maintains your mana nice. And then we're going to have to go here to get Culling Strike. Actually going here is really good because we can take increased effect of marks, which is 5.5% more damage. These are the nodes I drop. They're not amazing anyway. The only reason I like these, to be honest, is the increased effect of non-damaging ailments. These two nodes on this Cluster Jewel, so Prismatic Heart and just the Lightning Damage, do almost as much. And we get some resistances that on this build you might struggle for. Um, if you find that you've just got no way of getting your resist, you can go resist here. I'd recommend having non-damaging ailments, but you could go and put your resistances in here. Uh, and that's kind of it for the tree. As I say, we drop these nodes and we drop these nodes. Then it allows us to take these mark nodes and fill out our cluster jewel. Now, the clusters I recommend, the large cluster jewel, like I said, just needs sadist. Then it needs two others. And then you're going to take whatever those are unless this back one is just... If this back one was widespread destruction, I wouldn't take it. But we need it to path here, so that's what we're taking. Your ultimate cluster jewel is going to be Sadist, Stormrider, and any other. Probably going to be expensive. 
because you get Storm Rider here, which gives you power charges, and then you'd have your Sadis, which gives you a ton of damage um, if you've chilled, ignited, or shot an enemy. You do need that node if you want your Cluster Jewel setup to outperform your Lion setup. Then we've got one Projectile Cluster Jewel and one Crit Cluster Jewel. Now these do about the same in DPS. The Projectile ones are a tiny bit more. You might decide you're not that bothered about prod speed, but I do like it on Rain of Arrows because it makes your hit sort of instant. If we were to change this to a crit cluster, the DBS is pretty much identical. So you can do whatever you like. I like the prod speed, so I'm going to put that on. Obviously, the crit chance goes down, but we're almost at 100% anyway. And then the jewels is the next thing to go through. In order for your cluster jewel setup to outshine Lion, you do need decent jewels. They don't have to be amazing, but they've got to be damaged. So to make it that they're not budget breaking, I've not included life on these jewels or any sort of um, implicits. You've got crit multi, attack speed with bows, attack speed, mid rolls on all of these. If you could only get crit multi and attack speed with bows and junk mods for the rest, it still outperforms the lion. So don't think, oh, I can't get that three mod jewel, so I'll have to buy a lion. You don't. Just crit multi and attack speed with bows will be fine, and they should be dirt cheap because they're really common. For your lethal pride, I've stuck one in that basically does nothing. It might have the odd bit of strength or life somewhere, but none of the mods we're looking for. What you want here is double damage and intimidate. So I have one in here. So we'll tick it in. You can see the double damage automatically puts our damage up. And then we can also tick intimidate here. And it jumps up again. So again, our damage goes up. If you then decided, no, I'm going in boss mode, drop the termination for anger, and you get this sort of DPS. That's the setup I recommend, and it's a setup I'm having an absolute blast with. By all means, follow the previous POB. It will work, but I think with all the changes that Slot has helped me make, this is much, much better. I'm not going to include this, as I say, in the main video because it's going to really, really confuse people that haven't watched this video. All I can do is put a massive prompt on that video saying, go and watch this video if you want to do more damage and live longer. If they don't, there's not much I can do. Um, so what I will do is put this POB in the description so i'm not going to put a leveling pob in for this one because you are leveling exactly the same you are just taking whatever nodes you want in the order you want doesn't matter if you don't want to run that because you really want to be ailment immune in the campaign then don't you're going to ascend exactly the same way if you decide actually i just want to be quick and i'm happy to maybe try and get chill immune somewhere or run purity of elements then you would go these three it's totally up to you but yeah follow the same leveling trees they're not going to make a difference just aim to get here at the end and you'll have a really, really, really good time. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If they ever bring the Atlas tree out, I will bring out a quick video on what I'm planning to do. Um, other than that, I need to thank Slot for all his help. He's kind of spent hours along with me, not getting any sleep, going through these trees, because he's playing this build as well. And obviously, the better we can get the build, the more comfy it's going to be, the more currency we can make, and the more we can pump into it. My idea for this build is that I normally switch builds a lot, but I love this build. And I love Tornado Shot. So from here, I'll probably farm currency, get an Omni, transition to Tornado Shot, and then I'm going all out. I'm going to spend as much money as I can to make the build good. I may even try and run Tornado Shot on a Raider by Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flesh, plus two projectiles. It's super expensive, but I just love the defenses and speed and smoothness this Raider gives you. And I feel like you lose it on Deadeye without things like the um, Headhunter, which has been nerfed. Um, Inspired Learning look like they're probably going to be pretty bad with all the mods that are around at the moment. So I would love to be able to get a combo of Raider Speed and uh, Dead Eyes DPS. And that's what I'm going to aim to do. Even if it costs me hundreds of devices to do it, I'm going to spend all league pushing this character to the max and I'll be bringing videos out as I go along. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and see you in the next one.